When you are about to get married, you are about to step into a future. A future is about to be set. So the things you did in the perimarital and paramarital areas, those things around the marriage area, they matter for the future of the home. If your family, your home is built on righteousness, it has a future. The house of the righteous shall stand. We have a lot of marital challenges in our generation today. Marital challenges. Quarrel, beatings, all manner. Because we have come to the point where marriage is just, it just happens like people buy cloth now. No rules, no regulations, no principles, nothing. If the family must be established, the marriage and the family must be established, if it must have a future, it must be established on righteousness. And these are the following things I'll just mention. Number one, premarital sex must be avoided at all costs. That is the Bible. Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable. The bed must not be defiled. When people are standing on immorality before they marry, one, immorality outside the marriage can be easy for either of them or both of them. Next, mutual suspicion. The man is suspecting the woman, the woman is suspecting the man. Next, slash down of respect. The value reduces. There is value in, in novelty. There is value in newness. And of course, lack of love. Apart from wickedness in the heart of a man, one of the things that will make a man to almost beat and almost want to kill his wife sometimes is that the value is very low. Huh? See, a lady living with a man, they haven't married. The man has almost killed her. She packs out only to return tomorrow and be begging, I'm sorry. Anything I did, forgive me, please. I can't do without you. Is it charm? They charm you. If they charm you, charm, no, they spoil. You know, oh, I'm very, very sorry. I just, I just beat the hell. And my, my wife sent me a, a video clip the other day where there were chronologies of women that were beaten to death by brutal men. My advice to any man who's, who takes his hand to beat his wife, to hit his wife, is very simple. When you are tired and you don't want to marry somebody's daughter, carry her, hand her over to where you took her from. Beating the wife was not part of the agreement of the marriage. No man handed his daughter to you to kill or to slap. You picked her from somewhere, go to that place and say for now, if she remains with me, I may kill her. So please hold her. Alternatively, if fight is worrying you, go to the motor park. There are many area boys in Lagos, Agbero boys in the they, they are waiting for fight. Man fighting woman is a shame. Am I, am I communicating at all? Primarita says avoided number two lies, lies, insincerity. I have a house in London, another one in Paris. In fact, I'm just back from Dubai now. To do some financial transaction. It involves oil wells in, in um, Saudi Arabia and um, some other places. And um, the transaction is 12.5 billion US dollars. And um, I'll leave there to fly to Florida to seal up some things. And the worst thing is that these are the kind of things that some girls believe. Oh, that man that says he has gone overseas 
He has not gone even over River Niger. Influencers <laughs> full of lies. You just see. I said in the other service, I said there are some people, the only thing that is true about them is that nothing is true. Don't hate a person enough to deceive them into something like marriage on the foundation of lie. It's not good. You are impotent, man. And you are telling a girl you want to marry her. With what? Impotent. Your prayer is not for a wife now. Your prayer is for the restoration of potency. Listen. Because I am not just preaching. These are things I have witnessed. Man, married girl. Only for the girl to realize that the man is impotent and he was aware. They lived together for about eight years. And waited in church. She walked out. You deceived me. You are not a man. There's a wickedness of heart. Wickedness of heart. You have a child out of wedlock and you don't want the other person to know. It's not, well, if you have a child out of wedlock and you have come before God, you have been forgiven. So you don't die with that challenge. If this person will not marry you because you had a child before, somebody who will both marry you and love the child. One of the most successful men in this world that I know, and you know if I mention the name, went to marry a lady and the lady already had a child and the person who is to be the father of the child re re rejected both the woman and the child and left. When this man came and he saw the woman, he liked the woman and the woman said yes, but I have a child out of wedlock. The man said I will marry you with a child. And when he realized that the child's father rejected him and rejected him, he said, I will be your husband and the child will be our first child. That child bears his son name now. I don't know if anybody in the world is aware. I love you and I love your child. You don't know the difference. You, don't, you won't be able to tell who is the father. You don't know. Because if the man loves you and vice versa, he will love you the way you are, the way he met you. So there's no need to lie. There's no need to deceive. There is no need whatsoever. If a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. There is no need. Lies and falsehood must be avoided. They are bad foundations for marriage. I've seen people walked out of relationships when they, they realized they were deceived. A man married his wife. He was the first person that knew that woman. But that knowledge happened when they have not yet married. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to marry you. Before they married... They had relationship with each other. But they still went ahead and married normal. Because they were on the journey to marry. They were not Christians then, but they got married. Now, in the, ha in the man was the first man in that woman's life. But unknown to him, he was not the only person. In between when they started and when they married, she had met another person. Who was the man's friend and had relationship. Now, they went into the home and the man in his mind, I am the first person and the only person in this woman's life, but he wasn't aware until about eight years later. For whatever reason, is it me you dealt with like this? And the man went out like wildfire, bringing women to his matrimonial bed in the front of his wife. See what you can do for dealing with me like this. Led to HIV. 
both of them, HIV AIDS. And in those days, it's not like today when you have plenty antiretroviral. One of them is alive. From the, you see, because of one seed. Am I communicating? Well, you may be the, the first, but not the only. I made a mistake, whatever. If the man wants, he can go ahead. If he doesn't want, he stops. It's far better. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. 